Welcome back. First thing first, we have a new team member, Chris, Ber Chris Gerber. So some of you probably already heard from him as he being your point person, but he's here to help. Uh, second, uh, don't forget that your project is due next Wednesday. So we are diving into iOS slash Objective-C today, but you still need to keep up with your project that still has to do with JavaScript and HTML. Okay, so first we're gonna recommend some books. Uh, David always recommends this one. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that your book is up to date with all the new iOS versions. So iOS 7, it was a very recent development. Uh, we are only gonna be dealing with iOS 6, plus I think iOS 7 isn't like officially available for a couple months. So iOS 6 is what you're gonna wanna be using. Uh, when you start going back versions of iOS, things start changing pretty significantly. Uh, you don't wanna go back to like iOS 4 or before because things are gonna be substantially different. So look for iOS 6 things. Uh, another book that I've never actually looked at, but is supposedly also pretty good, is this one. Uh, and I added this slide just before, because this is the one I actually use just to catch myself up with everything. Uh, it's a free preview of a book, and I found it to be pretty good. I feel obligated to say, like he does at the top of the page, that if you found it useful, you might want to consider actually buying the book. Uh, but that pretty much everything is in here. Okay, so. Before we get into Objective-C, we first need to touch on C. So it's important to remember that Objective-C is a proper superset of regular C. So like any Objective-C program that you write, you could write valid C all throughout the Objective-C program. Well, not literally everywhere, but uh, everything you know from C is still applicable in Objective-C. So first, to, uh, show of hands, who knows C or any C? That's better than I was anticipating. Uh, and another show of hands, who has any experience with any object-oriented language? All right, cool. So we'll do a really quick intro to C just to refresh you on everything. Uh, you'll probably re recognize that a lot of it is pretty similar to JavaScript, so it's probably still pr pretty fresh. So your very standard Hello World program, uh, what does hash includes standard io.h do? What is standard io.h? I think I might have heard someone say it, but it's a header file. It literally just contains like, uh, we'll see like the, the declarations of the functions. So we'll see more examples of those later. Those are still gonna be pretty important in Objective-C. Uh, here we see we are declaring our main function. So just like in C, we declare a main function. In Objective-C, you are also going to have a main function. Uh, and what are these guys? Int argc and const char star argv. What are those? Command line arguments. So int argc is how many arguments were passed at the command line, and const char star argv are what those arguments were. And then we just printf, uh, we'll, be, we'll see that once we get to Objective-C, we're not gonna really be using printf anymore, uh, but pretty standard program. So statements, that is a statement. Variables, you just declare them int n, or you can say int n equals zero. That's gonna be the same when we get to Objective-C. We have all of our regular primitive data types, char, double, float, int, long, and then the modifiers like unsigned int and unsigned double, and uh, printf, so if we, okay, let's go into, we'll have a whole bunch of example programs up, and we have a whole bunch in C and Objective-C. We're not gonna go through all of the C ones because a lot of them will just be tedious, but if you feel you need the refresher, you can just go back and look at all these. So we'll look at first C one, uh, hello C. Okay, so uh, this is what we just saw before up there. And printf, remember, takes these modifiers, such as percent %s, that are going to then be a comma-separated list of things at the end of the printf call that you're gonna fill in. So like percent %s, it's expecting a string to fill in that percent %s. And if instead we did int n equals 50, 
then we could do percent %d and pass in the variable n. So that's how we're going to use printf uh, with, that's how we print variables. And you'll see that these format specifiers, this percent %s and this percent %d for integer, uh, those are going to carry over into some Objective-C areas. Plus, all of these primitive data types, remember that Objective C is a superset of C, these still exist. Josh? Yeah. Can you back. The slide will be online later, but if you want to look it up now. Thank you. Yeah. And feel free to stop me at any point with questions. Good. Oh yeah. Okay. So the Boolean expressions, uh, the very simple ones that you should all be used to at this point. Conditions, we have our regular if else's. Loops, we have for loops. So in JavaScript, you also have the like for in. Uh, you'll also see that in Objective C. Regular C does not have that. Uh, so we have our regular for loop, regular while loop, regular do while. And all of those will still be usable in Objective-C. So casting is an interesting case where it's exactly the same between C and Objective-C, but you're going to see you might be needing it a lot more once you get to Objective-C. So in C, there are only so many cases I can possibly think of where I want to cast. Like one example is if I want to do like 3 divided by 5. You know how like if we just do the integers, then 3 divided by 5 is going to be 0. So I might want to cast 3 to a float so that it actually does like floating point division. So that's one scenario I can think of where I want to cast. Once we get to Objective C and we start dealing with classes and things, then we're going to want to cast like, we'll see more of this, but like super types to subtypes and subtypes to super types. So casting, uh, you'll want to be comfortable with it. And then pointers, uh, they won't be as important in Objective-C, but you're still going to have to deal with them. Uh, so we have just the type of a pointer. Let's actually look just as an example. All right, we'll go over the typical example of a swap function that here, oh, so this line, like I hinted at before, this swap line is the function's prototype. So those are the sorts of things that we'll see in header files like standard io.h. Uh, we'll also see like struct definitions. We'll get to structs. Uh, we'll see hash defined things. Uh, so here in main, we declare a variable x and a variable y. And then we print x, print y. And now we want to swap x and y. So ideally, after this swap line, x will have the value 1 and y will have the value 0. They will have swapped values. And I won't actually run it, but trust me when I say that this will not succeed. Looking at the actual swap function, we see it takes a and b. So we're passing x for a and y for b. Uh, we then store a in a temporary variable, put a, b into a, and put the original a into b. So why this doesn't work is it's important to remember that everything in C, when you pass it to a function, it's always a copy of the thing being passed. And so here, what we're actually passing to a swap is a copy of the value 0 and a copy of the value 1. And so down in the swap function, when we say A equals B, we're just modifying the copy of those values. We're not modifying the original X and, X and Y. So here's where pointers become important. So here, notice the function prototype has changed. We now are passing int star a. So as soon as you see int star or char star or anything star, you know you're dealing with a pointer. And coming down here, 
we're no longer passing x and y, we're passing ampersand x and ampersand y. So ampersand, I usually read literally as address of. So we're passing the address of x and we're passing the address of y. And so, oh, and it's since x is an int, then when you get the address of an int, the type of that address is an int star. If we had a char and we put an ampersand before it, then we would have a char star. So coming down into the swap function, again, this is going to take an int star and an int star. And here, uh, it's unfortunately somewhat confusing that there are two uses for the star. Uh, the first use for the star is to declare something as a pointer type. So when you see int star b, you know that b is, in, is a pointer to an integer. When you do not see a type, like right here, when you say star a, we are dereferencing that pointer. So if b points to y and a points to x, then star a is referencing the original x. And so temp is going to store the original value of x. Star a equals star b. We're going to go to the original value of x, like the original x, and we're going to store there the original y. And so x has actually been changed now. And here we're doing the same thing. We're going to y and storing the original value of x. Questions? OK. So in Objective-C, a lot of this is going to be, you won't be needing to do as many explicit dereferences. But it's important to remember that when you're passing these things, that objects themselves are pretty much like pointers. And so if like, you pass an object to a function, and in that function you modify the object, the original object will have been modified. And we're going to see that. And just for fun, I threw in the end that char star star is also an example of a pointer. It just happens to be a pointer that points to a pointer that points to a char. So a good example of that is just our command line arguments, argv. So ignoring the fact that it's bracket syntax, there are some, this isn't entirely true, but in a lot of scenarios, arrays and pointers are pretty much equivalent. So const char star argv bracket we could have also said as const char star star argv, which makes sense since argv is an array of strings, and we represent a string as a pointer to a single character. Questions? OK, so structs. So It'll be important to actually remember structs because you will still be dealing with them in Objective-C and a lot of the iOS code will be dealing with some structs. Uh, unfortunately, it can be somewhat confusing because you might forget when you're dealing with a struct versus an object since they are different. Uh, but let's look at an example of using a struct. Remember, struct is pure C and objects are Objective-C. Yes. Do you have a structure of objects? So you can. Uh, once we get to Objective C, you can. Yes. It's a struct is literally just a wrapper for a like a group of variables. So if you can have a variable point to an object, then you can store that variable in a struct just as well. Uh, looking at a struct example that doesn't use objects. <laughs> We see here this type def struct student. Uh, so the only reason for the type def is so that, then we technically need to put student here, but the only reason for the type def is so that whenever we want to declare a variable of this struct type, if we just do this, now we have to say struct student x and struct student y. So the type def just saves us that. And now we can just say struct student, or now we can just say student x and student y. 